Hello everyone and welcome back to Coon Valley Campers. Today we're going to show you how to put this Evo design flat pack interior into your camper van. So the van we're going to be fitting all of this to today is a short wheelbase VW T4 that previously had a Rymo conversion. Now as a bit of a background, Rymo is a European based company and as well as, as, well as Westphalia are basically one of the benchmark companies to have a van conversion with. Um, the existing interior, as you can see, is non-existent. The customer of this vehicle, the owner of this vehicle, actually removed it all themselves and specified that they wanted an Evo Designs flat back interior. They looked at a range of options and the interior that suited their budget and taste best was the interior you see here today. Um, what we're gonna do is unbox it with you so you can see everything that's included with the package and then we're going to go through the tools you are going to need to do it and then we'll fit it together in the van and you can see every step of the way. So the heart of any camper interior, heart of any kitchen really, is the hob and the fridge. It's where you're storing your food and where you're cooking your food. Uh, there was obviously a choice of having an oven in a camper van but the customer hasn't gone for that this time. Um, both products you see are from Dometic um, the fridge was bought as part of the Evo design bundle. It's an optional extra, which means you get it at a slightly cheaper rate. They can supply a hob and a sink, and they will actually cut out the worktop for you, ready to just sit your sink into. In this instance, the customer has said they don't want a sink, they don't really use a sink, they just want a hob, so they've chosen uh, this Dometic um, hob and what we're going to have to do is cut the space into that hob and when it comes to that time we'll go through that with you. So the hob itself is just a fairly simple two burner with a glass lid. It's nice and small but as with all of the Dometic products they're nice and smart, nice and modern and uh, fairly easy to install but I look forward to going through that with you. The Dometic CRX50 is pretty much the go-to fridge for smaller camper conversions like the VW Transporters. They're an excellent piece of kit um, on three and a half days, well they will keep running for about three and a half days on a decent leisure battery and they're small, they're a nice bundle. The only kicker is they're a little bit on the pricey side, you're looking at anywhere between five and six hundred pounds for this fridge, but again if you were to buy the Evo Design bundle um, you get the fridge at a reduced price, so go through that with you in a bit later as well. Okay, it's kind of like Christmas, coming early. Like any kid on Christmas morning, I'm going to go with the biggest one first. All right, straight in there, I can see a that's the pole for the table, so that will mount on the side of the interior so you can move your table up and down. We have drawers, fixings, brackets, sticker. That's going on my door. Um, and an inventory of all the parts and the interior that we've got. So that's cool. Next thing to come out is the panel trims. So we have some beaded trim there and some T-trim as well. And you knock that into all around the edges of either the doors and all the worktop. There's a nice big bundle there. Table leg. Oh. 
Right, these are the roller shutter doors. Two of them. Roller shutter doors, tambour doors. In silver, and the runners will be in another box. That's why that box is so heavy. All of the parts. So, I'm gonna guess straight off the bat, if you're good at building IKEA furniture, in that sort of sense, you've got to follow instructions. This is exactly what this is gonna be like. So all the panels in different colors. Oh, we're gonna be busy today. Oh, very nice. Now this is an optional extra as well. Now this is a shelf that goes above the hob and sink. That is a really nice unit. And you can see the colors that we're going for as well. We're going for the cream with the silver edging and this, we've got this nice LED down lighter as well. And this will go about there in the van. So that's gonna work out really nicely. Last but not least, the really big one. Now when these arrived, delivered on a pallet. So if you are having one of these delivered, make sure you have the means to get the pallet off the vehicle. Because when it arrived, the delivery truck didn't have a working tail lift. But luckily we've got people working here that were able to give us a hand at the time. So, what it looks like is we have our longer tambour door runners. Or well, these will be the trims that sit at the bottom of the interior. And then we have all the larger pieces of the interior ready to go in as well. I'm gonna have a field day today. So that's it, we've, we've not unboxed everything right now, but the next thing we're gonna have to do is remove everything, lay it out, take a good look at the instructions, see where we need to start. And I guess the first place we're gonna start is instruction number one. The thing about this vehicle is it's already been converted. So the electrics are in a different place. Um, our 240 volt input, for example, it's here. Since the van's been with us in our care, we've re-trimmed the headliner, we've re-trimmed, sorry, we've carpeted the headliner, we've carpeted that panel. We've made this wooden ply panel you see just behind us, um, and we've just cleaned the whole van out. So it's gonna be quite interesting. Let's see how the Evo interior fits in an existing Rymo conversion. Let's get on with it. They needed a grown up to be able to organise their shenanigans today, so they put me in charge of all operations. I can't read. They don't know, I can't read. Yeah. First of all, a cup of tea and kick it back. Okay, we are a well-oiled machine. We've got Gary on the instructions, we've got Dan picking parts, me constructing, because we want to make this as quick as possible for you and for obviously the build and the customer itself. Um, we are dry fitting everything first, just so we know everything's in the right place. Everything's still got the film on. You see everything's got this protective film, but we've spread everything out on um, either a piece of wood or a bit of cardboard, a bit of foam on the floor. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna go from there and you know, enjoy the ride. <laughs> So what Evo Designs have done is given you pre-cut holes, which are exactly the same spacing as your brackets, and on the instructions it says where to put the brackets, which is awesome. Um, the screws they give you, which are 3.5 by 15, don't go in those holes. So what they give you is these little uh, white threaded grommets, infills. So you pop them in there. I'm going to give it a little tap. A little toffee hammer. 
and then you'll be able to screw your screw in. Simple as that. Only trouble is, it's like a bag of 500, so it's gonna take a while. Okay, rather than smashing your new interior with a hammer um, to put those grommets in, Gary has come up with an awesome idea about using a set of these welding clamps. You put the grommet into the wood, put your welding clamps on, tightened up to the right amount. And just pops it in nice and flush. What I'm going to go through now is the T-trim and how to fit it within your panels. All of the panels that we have here um, have a groove on one side which is going to be the face um, of, the, of the interior and we're going to have to fit this T-trim in it. Now it's sided, it has a lip on one edge and generally that will fit on the exterior of the, of the panel. So this side here is the interior it's got the screw hole fixings and the cutouts for other slots and this will be the front of the panel so generally we will put the lipped edge on the exterior of the panel now we know where to fit the trim because there's a cut groove that's been routed onto the edge of the panel and we will simply fit the trim into that groove and then use a rubber mallet this is a rubber mallet, we've just taped it up to protect the things we're going to be hitting with. Hitting it with. You make sure you line it up correctly. And then once that's bashed in there, you can see that it fits really nicely in that groove. Fit it the wrong way, no. <laughs> so now we swap the panel round, we know that this is the front and the grooved, sorry, the overlapped part here is going to be sat to the front and it's simply a case of popping that into that groove there, give it a bash with the mallet and you see that the lip overhangs that front face nicely, the groove is, sorry, the, the tea trim is sat in that groove nicely. You just got to make sure bash it all the way home so it's nice and level throughout the whole thing. Now when you get to an area like this which is quite thin, and I know this from experience because I've done it before, don't be having it up this way and smacking the trim in with a hammer because you could potentially break the piece of wood across here. Um, so once you get to this point, put the panel down on a hard surface and then hit downwards onto it. Don't have it upright, bashing it that way, otherwise you'll break the whole thing. So yeah, we'll just go and do that now. I just used a sharp blade just to slice off at the end. I know some people will use pipe cutters, they're really good. If you do use those, make sure they're really sharp. Um, and there's other trim cutters as well that I've seen people use um, that I use for double glazing trim, stuff like that. So it's a really nice sharp blade. You can get it absolutely straight on that edge. Um, but we found uh, using a nice new blade in your Stanley knife works really, really well and you can get it really nice and flush against the trim. As a little bit of a handy hint when it comes to fitting T-trim to these doors, when it comes to right angles on the actual 
panel itself. Um, it's very difficult to get that bend round that corner without it kinking. So what we simply do is mark first of all where you want or where the corner sits on that groove. So I'm just going to mark it with a knife there, peel it back a touch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a 90 degree angle into that. So when I fold the trim, there'll be no kinking in it. So if I do that now, then we can pop the trim back in. And as you're pulling it round that right angle, as you're fitting it round that right angle, you're pulling it just to get a bit of tension on that corner. Hold the tension in, give it a knock, and then it's going round that right angle nice and tight and there's going to be no kink in the groove. To butt the two pieces of T-trim together, I've laid it roughly over where the join is and I'm going to make a mark just after the join. All right, only a couple of mil over the join there and then I'm going to make my cut down here and then when I fit them together, I'm gonna to butt this piece up against here first. And then when I hit the trim into place, they'll butt together really, really nicely and give a nice seamless, oh, as much as it can be, seamless join. Okay, uh, another point to note, when fitting the hinges and your T-trim, you'll notice that the T-trim is actually sticking out here. And that's because the inside groove of that T-trim is actually hitting the hinge itself. Much like there, as you see. So you can actually see the groove of the T-trim right in that hole. So what I'm gonna do is just take a knife, slice it out of the way, and then the trim and the hinge will sit there nicely and not interfere with each other. Next stage, now we've completely fitted up the door with its hinges and catches, it's going to be fitting them onto actual hinge receivers here. Now these work much like any other regular hinge in your kitchen at home, um, where in the sense that you can adjust the height of the hinge brackets in these two Phillips screwdrivers here, and then you can adjust the depth of the hinge using this screw here. So we'll go ahead and put them in. So the next bit we're going to be doing is the trim around the worktop and the trim for this opening hatch here. We're with the temperature today about seven or eight degrees in the workshop. So we're just using the heat gun just to warm up that T-trim. Makes it loads more flexible. Um, makes for a nicer, easier job. And then when it gets colder, it'll uh, harden up and form around those shapes. We've come to this corner on the worktop and what we're gonna use is a tool to get the T-trim as far into that corner as possible to give a nice uniform finish. Now what we're gonna use here is just the back of this uh, handle, uh, this plastic hammer handle. I'm gonna pop it in there and just tap it gently until that trim is all the way home and gives a nice uniform finish.
So we've got the first part of the interior all pretty much done. I mean, there's gonna be a bit of fine tuning to do the doors and the drawers and everything else. And I've kind of shown you where those adjustments can be made on the hinges, for example. Um, so as you can see behind me, it's in. Um, what we're gonna work on next is the rear cupboard. Now that's got two tambour doors. Um, and after a quick look at the instructions uh, that, that come provided, it's a fairly self-explanatory um, way to do it. But let's just point out a couple of things first. We have these corner runners and we have these straight runners as well. And what we can ascertain from the instructions is that we are going to fit these first in the provided holes. And we're gonna measure the distance between this point and this point and cut this channel to fit between those two points. And then we're going to do the same for all of the runners, for all of the tambour doors. Once that's done, we're gonna construct the unit, again, as per the instructions, and um, we'll have all the runners in place then. Now, we covered a lot with you earlier of how to build that, and there's gonna be lots of shots of me screwing and hammering in some of the tea trim and stuff like that. So we're not gonna to go too much into it. What we'll do first is just walk and talk through the um, tambour door runners and then once we've done all of that you should see a completed interior section right at the end. So we've measured up all our boards, we've marked it, we've used a straight edge to make sure we've got our right angles correct and we're just going to cut the plastic with a simple hacksaw. Should come out really nicely, and then we'll get it fitted onto that board. So, <laughs> it's the end of the day. Everybody else has gone home, I'm still here, and I'm gonna get the rear unit finished. Um, it's a lot of work, it really is. The beauty is the quality is up there. Everything's really, really good with this kit. You get all the fixings, all the screws, all the nuts, bolts, washers, everything. But it's a lot of effort to put it together. Join me tomorrow morning when I'll have this all in. I might have the hob in by then, I don't know, we'll see. But um, by the time I next see you, with a bit of uh, movie magic, you will see the interior all in. Last time you saw us, I was halfway through building that interior. That was on a Friday. It's now Monday, it's a new day, new week, and we've got a new cameraman, so thanks Gary. Um, we have completed the interior. It went together really, really nicely, and as you can see, it's a really, really nice piece of kit. Problem is, it doesn't fit. It would fit a T4 if we had built it, but because this is a Rymo conversion and because it's got sliding uh, tracks for the rock and roll bed, the floor is raised a little bit too high, which means, have a look up here, this interior is meant to fit underneath that roof pillar or underneath this part here. And it's not going to, this needs to sit in line, at least with this point down here. So our next stage is to scribe out the area we want to cut out, disassemble the interior a little bit, not by much, um, but then just work to get it fit. So be prepared for the montage of me trying to get this to fit. Point to note, when you're cutting this lightweight ply or a veneered ply, try hardest to find a jigsaw blade with a downward cut. So when you mark the line on the face you want to preserve, have a downward cut rather than an upward cut. If you have an upward cutting blade, it could pick off and flake that nice edge you're trying to make. 
So as you can see on this cut, we've got the downward cutting jigsaw blade and it's making a really nice defined line through that veneer. So there we have it. You've seen all the work we've done to it now. We've, we've profiled the edges. We've reinstated the, the T-trim around the edges as well. And really, really happy with the fit. As we said before, we had to raise the whole interior. Sorry, we had to profile the interior because the floor's a lot thicker than you would do or than we would fit in a normal van. And yeah, just generally very, very happy with the fit. I'm not gonna show you how we're gonna screw it into this van because you're, you've probably got a different van to this. Um, and th where you are going to fix the van will be different to where I'm fixing it. Now, what Evo Design do is give you a bunch of fixings, much like these, and as long as you place them right on the floor or in the side, or in the ply on the wall of the vehicle, or even in the metal areas on the walls of the vehicle, then you will have a sturdy interior. Just make sure you get clearance on your bed, you get clearance on all your doors and your fridge doors and everything else, and say if you've got a pop top, just make sure everything on your pop top fits nicely against your interior. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's, like I say, it's taken a long time, um, longer than we thought, but with um, an Evo, des Evo design interior, well, the reason they're popular is they're very well built or they're very well designed and then you go and build it. But with the instructions you get and the parts, you get everything you need. We're super happy with it. And I'm sure the customer is gonna be very, very happy with it too. If you like what you've seen today and you want to check out more of our camper van videos, please check our links wherever we've put the videos right at the end here. And uh, if you want to look at actually purchasing your own Evo design, we've left a link down in the description below as well. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.